Welcome YouTube family and welcome to another video of the Kevin Strong Show. And in this video, we're going to talk about how food prices are just getting out of control. We have all have noticed this at the grocery store. When you go out to a restaurant, anything that's related to food, you have seen an alarming increase in the price of food and all the costs that are associated with this. Everybody knows what's going on. Um, between Russia and Ukraine. And I think it's my understanding that Russia uh, handles about 30% of the world's wheat. There's a lot of things that go into wheat. So it's not just that. Uh, there's other related products that's going to pre pretty much go up in prices as this uh, conflict continues to uh, unfold over there. Just some really, really bad things. So you got your normal big expenses when you talk about rent. You talk about maybe an automobile payment and probably third on the list in terms of a top three or top four uh, monthly expense that pretty much hits a high mark or takes a big chunk out of your uh, after tax dollars is your family food bill. So this is a big, big, big deal. Uh, food prices in the um, in the interim are going to continue to go up. Uh, in value in terms of the prices. I encourage people to do what's called dollar cost averaging. Uh, I'm not saying go out and panic, but I think if you have the extra money, it would be a smart thing to do is to go out and stock up on things that you know you're going to need because they'll be cheaper and you'll eventually be able to get to those products uh, before they ex expire. Just for disclosure purposes, like I say, this channel is all, all about topics you can trust. Uh, I'm not a prepper or anything like that, but I have taken this pretty seriously. I've been accumulating food uh, for about the last couple of years, pantry food, canned items, things like that. I also, uh, in 2020, when the health crisis broke out, bought a deep freezer, a pretty, a pretty big uh, deep freezer. And I have a lot of food packed in that. And I also have probably about seven to eight months of emergency dry food uh, there's a company called uh, My Patriot Supply. I'm not a sponsor. I don't get any, you know, kickback or commissions if you decide to to buy there. But it's a pretty reputable uh, company that deals with emergency food. It's the type of emergency food that will last up to 25 years. I bought a three month supply, uh, and that was like six hundred dollars. And I looked about a week or two weeks later, and now that same. Uh, three month supply has gone up like $150. It's like $750 now. So it's important to uh, really take this stuff serious food cost wise. Like I said, if you do have the extra money, please, please go out and stock up on items that you need and it will save you some money in the long run. So without further ado, let's get into the news specifically as it relates to rising food prices in 2020. Here's everything you need to know. And this is basically what this article is just talking about, how I led up with about how the rising cost in food is just getting out of control. So according to the Wall Street Journal, food prices are estimated to rise 5% in the first half of 2022. And while other sources point to a 7% increase by the end of this year. So as you know, as well as I do, most folks are not getting a 5 6 or 7% raise. So here again, wages are not keeping up with inflation in terms of things that cost the most. You've got energy that's out of control. You have housing that's out of control. You have food prices now that are out of control. So this is really, really an alarming situation. Let's go ahead and continue to look at some of this information. Let's drop down here where this basically says, what causes the prices to spike in 2022? Various causes are, are fueling this seemingly unending crisis. And that's why I say, who knows when these prices are going to actually start to taper down. I will have an opinion about that at the conclusion of this video. So please listen to the end. I think you'll find it very enlightening and no one on the internet is saying this. Trust me, as I told you, I don't do clickbait. So let's get back to this particular section of the article. In particular, supply chain issues, labor shortages, and the overall high demand across the U.S. has contributed to an impending price hike. And as we look ahead to the new year, it seems that inflation rates will continue to profoundly affect the food service industry, leading to rising prices. So I'm sure you guys have noticed that even when you go out to the restaurant, um, 
prices have just gone crazy. There was a Chinese place that I like to go to just south of uh, the Seattle area. That's all I will say. I won't name it. And he had a really good uh, a chicken and broccoli dish that used to be like last year. It was like like ten or eleven dollars. It's like almost eighteen dollars now. So I, I stopped going. It was just too much of a price uh, increase. So which items will have the highest prices? So let's look at this. First of all, they're saying vegetables like potatoes, celery, but also fruits, eggs, uh, di um, diary, <laughs> dairy, steaks, and chicken are likely to see a price increase owning to overall higher freight costs. So all of this stuff is just getting passed on to the consumer. The consumer, once again, their wages are not keeping up with inflation. People are feeling like the proverbial walls, the inflation walls are squeezing in and they seem like they have no room to run. No end in sight to the rising food prices. So as you say, at the beginning of 2020, the health crisis, I'm just paraphrasing here because I think YouTube's a little sensitive about that word related supply and labor issues are um, are still reckoning havoc on the food industry as I've been talking about this stuff is just getting out of control here's the point that I wanted to make to you guys that no one's talking about on the in, uh, internet in my humble opinion and this is going to get kind of technical and this is not what this this video is about because this is about food prices but the TOT uh, 20 year treasury that's that's the debt that's the debt market. Everything, listen to me, folks, you can please do your research on this. Everything revolves around the debt market. How big is the debt market compared to the stock market? The stock market is kind of like uh, a Tic Tac. And the debt market is probably like a grapefruit. That's how big of uh, a difference there is in size. So why am I bringing that up? Because ultimately, if the Fed decides to raise rates, which they probably will in the long run, Rates will actually go down. So at some point in time, maybe in the latter part of this year, we may actually see prices go down and we may get into what people are calling a deflationary period. But here's the problem with that. Just stick with me for easy math. If, if a gallon of milk is, let's say, $6 and it goes up to $10, okay? And then all of a sudden, because deflation kicks in or consumers get to the point where they can no longer afford to pay $10 for that gallon of milk. And as a result, the demand goes down for that product. So the price comes down. And let's say the price comes down from $10 to $8. That means the price has come down 20%. So that's a big, big cut. That's a big reduction in price. What happens is that if your wages aren't at a level that you can afford the $8 uh, price for a gallon of milk, it's a moot point that has come down 20% because it's still, after a 20% reduction, it's still at a price point where you can't afford, which still makes it an inflationary item that squeezes the average consumer. And this is what I'm talking about. You won't find anybody on the internet explaining it that way. There are some pundits out there who, a lot, who are a lot smarter than I am are basically saying, hey, look, we're going to hit inflationary issues maybe for the first and maybe the latter half of this year. But by the third or fourth quarter, prices are going to start to cool down and they're going to come down. Well, come down relative to what? If they don't come down relative to my income, it doesn't matter because I still can't afford certain food or products or services. So I hope you guys found this video um, enjoyable. I'm trying to see here. I'm trying to multitask. There we go. I hope you guys found this video enjoyable. It's kind of a quick one. I wanted to make sure this one was done under 10 minutes because I wanted to talk about food. So in summary, dollar cost average, please listen to me. Get some emergency food, that stuff that lasts a long time. If you can afford a deep freezer, they do have them on Amazon. Jump out and get one of those. Even if you have to spend three or $400, you can pack a lot of food uh, in those things. Uh, so between that, which I do have, and emergency food, I'm, I'm probably good close to about nine months. It may be a little bit longer than that if I stretch it. So I don't consider myself an extreme prepper. But once again, like I said, even if you stock up on items that you normally know that you're going to go through, if your dollar costs average, you'll find out that you're saving if you can afford to buy in bulk now instead of paying for the higher price later hope you enjoyed this edition of the kevin strong show you know my motto please please keep your credit score up and keep your debt down but more importantly if you're enjoying this content please hit that like button subscribe comment and share 
because you know I care. You guys have a great day and I hope to see you in the next video.